something about that. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, the, the light pathway today. And so in talking about the light pathway, we first have to kind of talk about how light travels in the eye. So obviously light comes in um, and it first hits the tear layer. I didn't show that here. But after hitting the tear layer, it then hits the cornea. And the cornea goes through the iris. Uh, after the iris, it goes through the lens and then it goes to a focal point onto the retina. Uh, from there, it, get, it travels to the optic nerve uh, via um, RG, or, uh, retinal uh, ganglion cell axons, uh, which makes up the optic nerve, uh, and then, of course, to the brain. Um, and so in terms of the retinal anatomy, uh, there's obviously a hierarchy to the structure of the retinal cells, with light first entering in through the, uh, through the bottom and then traveling towards the, um, toward the backside where the... Um, where the uh, um, uh, photoreceptors are located. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, how, does an image, how is an image produced? So what happens is as, as light is reflected from, from an image where you see number one, it gets um, um, uh, sent through into the eye via the pathway that I just dis explained. It's actually inverted. Uh, so the, the actual uh, organ, the eye itself, uh, sees an inverted image. It then gets trans, uh, that image gets transported over to the, to the optic, uh, occipital lobe where it then gets processed into the actual image that we perceive. Um, and so, of course, uh, that is shown as an A um, in our uh, occipital um, cortex. Um, and so in talking about the, the light pathway, it's important to talk about how light is uh, transduced. And so what happens is you have this, um, this opsin protein, which is important uh, as a component to the actual chromophore. Um, and specifically in rods, um, it's located uh, at the uh, cell disk membrane. Consists of about 348 amino acids. And again, it, com it complexes with the chromophore, in this case, this retinal, in order to form rhodopsin. Um, and so the chromophore itself obviously absorbs light, has a specific wavelength, and it gets transformed from this 11 cis to the 11 trans after being excited by light. Um, and then, of course, the trans retinal form is what's considered to be energetically um, unfavorable um, in this opsin uh, molecule. So um, in terms of the reactionary intermediates, so the goal for the, re for the retinal is to um, expel the used up chromophore and then have it um, be recycled um, via the, um, the, the pathway that I'll explain in a few seconds. And so uh, what you have are these uh, multiple intermediates. You go from rhodopsin to beta rhodopsin to lumi rhodopsin to meta rhodopsin 1, and then finally rhodopsin 2. Um, and rhodopsin, or metarhodopsin 2 is the form that actually gets transported um, um, and it actually is involved in the light transduction pathway. Um, and so the transretinal form um, is what is actually released and then sent to the RPE, and then from the RPE is recycled into the 11 cis form. So uh, hyperpolarization is actually what is used to conduct the, uh, the, the signaling from first the, from light capture and then forming it into an electrical, chemi 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 electrical signal. So what, what happens is you have this closure of these sodium channels, uh, which leads to this hyperpolarization of the cell. And then of course, the potential difference travels um, from the rods to, um, to the bipolar cells, and then finally to the retinal ganglion cells. Um, so like I said, metarhodopsin 2 is the form that's actually involved in the transduction pathway. So what happens is um, metarhodopsin complexes with transducin, and then this activates the enzyme uh, photodiesterase. And as you can see here, uh, the metarhodopsin um, binds to the uh, transducin, which then is complexed and then um, activates that phototransduction, uh, photodiesterase um, molecule. So color vision, how is it different from uh, monochromatic vision? Uh, it's, it has the same principles. Um, however, the only difference is in the actual opsin molecule itself. Each cone has a specific spectra of absorption for light, and so that's why you have the different colors, uh, or at least the three different colors that we know that are specific to uh, uh, cones. 
Um, and of course, this is the rod signal transduction pathway that I explained before. And so, like I was explaining, there's the metarhodopsin that binds to, or there's the opsin plus the retinol, which forms this cis retinol, uh, and then light enters, and then it transforms that into a transretinal form. Uh, the metarhodopsin uh, 2 then binds to the G protein receptor trans transducin. Uh, then that um, forms a complex with the photodiesterase unit. Um, and then from there, uh, cyclic GMP is converted to GMP. And then that later then closes uh, the ion channel, the sodium ion channel here. Um, and so less CM CGP CGMP leads to closure. And so when you have less closure, you, you have this hyperpolarization, um, and so less glutamate is being produced as a result. So uh, what happens um, from between dark and light? So what you have is this release of glutamate in the dark, and that's constantly being generated. And so you have this sodium channel that's, uh, that's being closed. Um, and so when you do have light, uh, when you are in a light environment, what that does is it stops the release of glutamate that then leads to the opening of the uh, sodium channel, and that leads to uh, further that, uh, hyperpolarization. Um, and so when you talk about the pathway of vision, I just explained uh, the photoreceptors and light signal. It then goes, it travels through the optic nerve, uh, eventually getting into the optic chiasm, the optic tract, and then goes on to uh, subnuclei in the, um, in the brain. And, the, and so you have lateral geniculate nucleus, you have the superior colliculus, and then the pineal gland. Um, and, then if, and then it later goes through the optic radiations, finally reaching the optic lobe, which is the occipital lobe, which is the primary visual cortex center. Um, and so in talking about the different paths, just quickly going through the chiasm, um, this is where um, the retinal output um, from the, the retina uh, first kind of, um, uh, it uh, uh, desiccates into, into, um, into several uh, uh, fibers. The most important thing to remember here is that um, there's a, about 51 to 53 percent of the retinal fibers are desiccating as they reach the op uh, optic chiasm. And so if you have, say, an injury beyond that we call retrochiasmal injuries, it's possible to affect uh, say the uh, the pupillary fibers, especially when we're talking about say an RAPD. So um, you can get an RAPD as a result of a retrochiasmal injury, um, and so this is kind of further elucidating the conversion points um, for the uh, retinal si or the the signal coming from the retina. As I said, you go through the chiasm and then, of course, the lateral geniculate body. But prior to that, you have uh, connections that go to the hypothalamus to the pretectum, um, as well as the superior colliculus um, from, the, um, from the fibers that are uh, desiccating. Um, and then, of course, the optic radiations, and then finally, the striate new, uh, cortex. Um, and just to kind of continue on this description of the different pathways, of course, again, the optic tract, uh, and this just then um, projects to the lateral geniculate nucleus, as well as the superior colliculus. Um, I will talk a little bit about the different subnuclei. So you have the lateral geniculate nucleus, and its primary function is it receives uh, the, the, main, the main support, or the main amount, or the, the majority of the uh, relay uh, uh, signals, or is the relay pathway uh, for the signals from the RGC. Um, and then, of course, the superior colliculus. This is important for head, as well as eye um, um, uh, orientation and movement. The pineal gland is another uh, area where uh, fibers are sent to. This is important for the production of melatonin, which is considered the hormone involved with uh, circadian rhythms. Um, and then uh, you have the occipital lobe, which is the primary visual cortex. And again, this is the final step uh, for this relay pathway from the RGC uh, through the multiple uh, um, paths. And that is the light pathway.